Why does everyone with the name Nick on YouTube lead to trouble? First this Nickocado Avocado, then Hard Rock Nick, and now a guy called Big Nick. If you don't know who I'm talking about, he used to be part of the vlog squad with David Dobrik before that whole thing collapsed, which I should do a video on. But after that, this guy called Big Nick, who used to be just someone who did sort of like funny challenges, dares, and was one of the funny men in David Dobrik's vlogs, has now turned to a life of Christianity. And initially, everyone thought, oh, that's pretty good. He found himself. He was even on the H3 podcast and even Ethan was like praising him for like having this change of heart and turn off events. Come to find out a few years later, this man is progressively making a cult. I don't know what has happened. I didn't check on him because I thought, okay, you know, there's nothing wrong with that turning to a life of Christ. Great. But then I looked at his stuff and I was like, Jesus Christ, but not in the way that he wanted. So today I'm going to take a look at his TikTok because we're going to try and convert. Whatever you are, you're gonna convert into Nickianity, which I think is like Christianity on steroids. Before I start the video though, I'm not actually trying to say, oh, this is bad or this is good. I just think that when you're a bit too extreme and you start telling people what they shouldn't do, for me personally, I'm like, I don't believe in that. I believe whatever you wanna do, you should within legal bounds and reason. But anyway, Big Nick's TikTok is pretty crazy. And the reason I'm even doing this is because of one of my friends who showed me that Big Nick looked at a video of yoga and said that Hindus are to blame and yoga is demonic. And I was like, God damn, I never thought would summon some like crazy shit, okay? I was just trying to crack my back. So let's take a look at some of these amazing TikToks Big Nick has. By the way, he's doing well on TikTok. He's got 2.3 million followers. He's a disciple of Jesus, new YouTube video, and uh, he looks pretty happy. So this is the first one. It's called Learn the Bible Secret on How to Receive God's Blessing Faster. All right, I always want to get God's blessing a little faster than usual. By the way, if you haven't started writing this down, Please, get a paper and a pen. We need to write these down. Are you gonna try and get to heaven or not, G? The location that you are living in can either hinder or bring forth God's blessing for you. In Mark 6, 4 through 6, it says, And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. The geographical location where Jesus was doing his ministry was hindering the fullness of his calling. Are you saying even Jesus messed up? Okay, now the thing with Big Nick is that he, he definitely contradicts himself a lot because I remember him saying Jesus is perfect and his idol and without any sin or any mistakes. But now you're saying Jesus was hindering his own progress by not being in the right location. But apparently you need to be in a certain location. So if you're in like, I don't know, China, maybe you need to get the fuck out of there and go to a place like China. <laughs> I was still living in Los Angeles. After much prayer, God showed me that I needed to move to Texas. Once I moved out here, I immediately made a ton of new friends, found an amazing home church, and my ministry started to expand. Now, almost a year ago, I actually moved out of the Dallas area and went to Florida. And as soon as I got there, my life changed for the worst. Well, that's because you moved to Florida. You don't have to even say anything other than, I moved to Florida and my life got worse. Everyone would be like, I'm okay. The spirit of poverty completely attacked my life and my bank account shrunk in half. On top of that, I actually developed a ringworm infection on my scalp. I became extremely overweight and I legitimately started to look homeless. Okay, a lot of those things, Nick. I mean, if you want to circumvent looking homeless, shave. That would help. If you don't want to be overweight, don't eat as much. And if you don't want your bank account to shrink, stop spending money. Like, I don't, I don't know if Jesus has much to do with that stuff. I'm just saying... I think that's more Florida, but okay. Completely outside of the region that God had called me to go to, because of that, I was not reaping God's blessing. After much Do you think if Jesus was in Florida, he'd be wrestling alligators right now? Because they definitely wouldn't have done what they did. I'm saying, I'm, I'm being blasphemous. I'm very sorry, but like, would he have a worse or better time in Florida? I don't that's a tough place. Much prayer, God made a way for me to get out of Florida and back to Dallas where he originally called me. As soon as I had moved back, my finances were completely restored. I almost lost 20 pounds of excess weight. And my digital ministry on TikTok went from hundreds of thousands of views to millions of views. That's crazy that he would spin that narrative like that because I'm looking at his views. And that's not true. It's like TikTok. Every eighth video does well, then the other ones are like, they tank. And that's kind of how TikTok works. So it's weird to say that, but apparently as soon as he left Florida, he lost 20 pounds. That much I can believe. All of that alligator meat not in your stomach, you'd be fine. So apparently, uh, step one 
of becoming closer to God is literally moving. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. Is the name Nicholas or Nikki? I don't know. Uh, this one is called Ex-Hindus Warning to Christians About Opening Their Chakras. Should a Christian be opening their chakras? As many of you know, this concept about opening your chakras has become a very popular concept in the New Age community and the Hindu community. Chakras are believed to be centers of energy within the body. In yoga, which is a practice that involves doing poses for Hindu deities. Is that what yoga is? Dude, I was stretching because last time I went to the gym, I blew my back out and I really always wanted someone else to do that. Gotta be Hindu to go to the gym these days. These energy centers are actually assigned to a specific deity. During yoga, they will actually open up these energy centers as a way to let these deities in them, which is an essential teaching of opening up the chakras. This is a satanic practice because you're actually letting disembodied spirits of the Nephilim into your body. God, what am I doing? I'm what? I'm Nephilim what? Oh my god. Brother, every time I drop a pen, what am I supposed to do now? Did I just leave it? I'm gonna be out of a lot of bix in a few seconds if I can't do this, because if this is seen as stretching, then I'm gonna open my Nephilism, I'm gonna be, my nepotism cage is open. Now I love the Hindus again. Damn it. Don't do yoga or stretch, okay? Jeez, and that's not a stretch. The Hindu deities are the offspring of fallen angels mating with human women, which were known as the Nephilim. So by opening your chakras and participating in yoga rituals to allow these Hindu deities in your energy center, you are giving permission in the spiritual realm for spirits of the disembodied Nephilim to possess you. It is a fact that our body does have energy centers in it. Well, that's, I like how he dropped a little science. It's a fact we have energy in the center of our body. <laughs> oh, that was the Nephilism coming out. Satan cannot create a doctrine unless there is some truth in it. Our body is full of atomic makeup and energy, and there is science behind the human anatomy that Satan knows that we don't. So knowledge of energy and energy pathways is not demonic. However, when you try to open these pathways, especially to Hindu gods and not the true god Yahweh, you are operating in the spiritual realm illegally. Okay, Hindu gods suck. Sorry, I'm riding with Big Nick on this. If you start stretching or you believe in Hindu gods, shame on you. I like Yahweh. That's the only way. So what do we learn? Move and don't be Hindu God lover. All right. I'm really good at this. this the third video he did is one of my favorites because he actually found someone who captured a picture of Jesus. That's gangster. Most of them are paintings. Apparently this lady captured a photo and the story will blow your tits off. So is that blasphemous? I'm sorry. I'm going to share with you documented photographic evidence of Jesus Christ, and you may not be the same after watching this video. But before I show you this picture, let's get into the backstory of how this documentation was received. Oh, even Jesus hate clickbait, okay? We can say that. What are you, waiting till the end? Ugh. A lady took this picture from an airplane window during an intense electrical storm. The plane started shaking violently and people started screaming, thinking that the plane might go down. The lady and her friend decided to pray, saying, Jesus, you calmed a storm 2,000 years ago. Do it again for us today. Within two minutes, the plane leveled off and the Holy Spirit told the woman to press her camera against the window of the plane and take a picture. That sounds less like Jesus and more like Homelander. Take a picture, press your camera against the wall, and maybe press something else against the wall, you know what I mean? She took the film to get developed, but when her pictures were ready, the man who developed the film asked this. Where did you get this photograph? She told him that she took it from her airplane window during an electrical storm. He showed her the picture, and there was a man in a white robe standing in the middle of the storm. Nick, what year was this? I thought you said she was on a plane, Nick. Who fucking flew her? The Wright brothers? Why is this so grainy? Why does it look like one of these photos? Did she take it on the iPhone brick? What the fuck am I looking at? Where's the window of the plane? There's so many questions. Outside of the window, she was in shock. The man who developed the film- The man who developed the film should be fired. What the fuck happened? This is developed film? This looks so underdeveloped. This is- Looks like a sonograph or something. My God. Decided to give his life to Jesus Christ that afternoon alongside with his entire family after seeing solid evidence that Jesus Christ was real. Do not ever forget that Jesus Christ is with you. He wants to be your comforter through the storms and the hardships. He told her to take that picture. Maybe he wanted like, he was like, haha, you have the shittiest camera of all time. Now I'm gonna make even more speculation happen. I don't know about this, Nick. 
Whole Foods just paved the way for the mark of the beast, and this is proof that we are living in the end times. The book of Revelation continues to unfold, as Whole Foods just announced that they are making all customers pay with their palms to buy groceries. What was once ridiculed as a conspiracy theory has now become a shocking reality. Oh, okay, so Whole Foods is now asking people to pay with their palms. That way it's harder to, you know, steal or scam people. Before that we had cards, before that we had money, before that we had goods and services to exchange each being easier to steal than the next, but okay. Not only is the palm scanning super odd, but the fact that Whole Foods is tracking you on a surveillance camera and sending you a notification on your phone about how much time you spent in the store is a complete violation of privacy. Oh, you know, you're right. Uh, you don't even have to love Jesus to know that. Every store that asks you for your email or your extra information just so that they have an index to then sell to other people is exactly why social media suck ass sometimes. That's what Facebook and everything else did. They're breaching of privacy constantly from people and then neglecting to tell their information. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Big Nick. So tell me, what, how, can I, how can I beat that? See. Revelation 13, 16 through 17 says this, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. I gotta be honest, bro, you just sounded like you're talking another language to me. I don't really know how that's gonna help my situation, so if you could digest that a little for me, tell me what exactly I'm supposed to do, I would, I would really appreciate it. As we see the agenda for the beast system come to fruition, it cannot be any more clear that Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. It's time to wake up and realize the Bible is alive and not just merely some form of literature, but the actual living word of God itself. Do I go to Whole Foods? Or no? I don't. Do I? Didn't actually get the answer that I want. Hey, but good for Jesus. So we've learned so far. Hindu gods suck. Move. Yeah, Jesus takes horrible photos of himself, or other people take shitty photos of him. And also, he is coming back, so you could probably take better photos because the iPhone 15 is coming out. So, here's another one. A lot of people don't understand, but the Nephilim are here on Earth right now. They're walking amongst us. Yeah, yeah. Shape shifting is real. And oh shit! Oh god! How much time do you have? I don't know if I can. I need to really brush up on my knowledge of life. Shape-shifting is real, man. Shape-shifting is biblical because the Bible even says that you may be entertaining angels even though they come in the form of humans. And so if that exists in the angelic realm, shape-shifting most definitely exists in the demonic realm. And a lot of the Nephilim actually can shape-shift into humans. We've seen people talking on the news and then their eyes turn into these reptile slits for a split second. Oh, uh, no, they're not the reptile people. Why are we still here? This is a lot. This is a lot. I'm just trying to learn how to be more like Big Nick. What is the thing? Is lizard people and Hindu suck. If you're a Hindu lizard, get the fuck out. And then go back to just being a human. A lot of the Nephilim right now are doing experiments on humans. Area 51, all these deep underground military bases. They literally have humans attached to machines and these incubators doing mind control experiments on them like MK Ultra. All of this programming that the media is doing on the masses and manipulating humans. The Nephilim had already beta tested this in their underground facilities thousands of years ago. They're way ahead of the game because they have somewhat of angelic knowledge still. People want to act like that stuff does doesn't exist. I mean, I didn't even know it existed. I don't... How did you know it existed, bro? God, where am I? Where are you reading your information? What the hell? I'm out here watching you. Now I know the information. Where did you get it from? I got to start asking people where they get their information from. I got to stop listening to DJ Khaled about golf tips and diet tips. But you could do research on deep underground military bases and realize that there's a whole interconnected subterranean network across the entire country. There's no subterranean network or whatever the hell you're saying. It's not like I could just click my fingers and then be in a change. Well. Nick, I am now a believer. Okay, this one's called Your Words Are More Powerful Than You Realize, which I've heard uh, not only Big Nick now say, but Tony Robbins, and he eats people with his big mouth and face. I have to believe him, because I'm scared.
There was a study by a guy named Dr. Emoto, and he did a study examining water under a microscope. And when he would speak words over it, like, I love you, the water would form in this beautiful crystallized fashion. And then when he would speak stuff like hatred over it, the water would separate from the crystallized fashion, and it would be completely dissolved and spread out. The Bible says that there's power of life and death in the tongue. Objects that we think are inanimate, the science has proven they are actually animate. When Jesus spoke to the waters, they obeyed him. It's biblical. Although we can't see that in the spirit realm, the science actually can testify of the spirit realm. And there's scientific evidence to support this. Yep. That's why there's so much power in what you speak. Hmm. I love you. And they still charge me money for it. I don't know. Okay, how about this one? We're back to another Hindu slamming because of yoga, which comes from yolk, which I thought came from an egg, but it's now just an egg talking about something, so. I don't know how as a Christian you could defend yoga. As an ex-Hindu, yoga literally means yoke, and you're yoking with these demonic Hindu deities. I yoked with a couple people last week. So you're doing these positions, and in the spiritual realm, you're actually given authority and legal access for these demons to enter you, because the yoga positions that they have created is a form of spiritual worship. When you're worshiping something other than Jesus Christ, like yoga, where it's worship to Hindu deities, you are allowing demonic spirits to inhabit in your soul. Wait, why did God make those practices if he d doesn't want us to practice them? Is it just to trick us? so that we would go to hell. Why is there a hell? This is really, really tough because yoga pants are so good. Like whoever made those, thank you. But like now I hate yoga because I'm on Big Nick's side. I want to be on the cult of Nick. I want to get braided in my hair and nobody even question what the hell that is. But I agree with the top comment. What's the Christian way of stretching? But we're gonna make an exception with yoga. One of the reasons why American Christians are so deceived is because they think that yoga is just stretchy. Yeah. If you knew what I knew about yoga growing up in the Hindu temple, you would realize as a Christian that this is a satanic practice and you need to completely stay away from this stuff. Wow. Stop stretching. Fucking need to stop stretching before every match of you playing basketball, get injured. That's the Christian way, apparently. One thing I think Christians don't realize is your intentions don't matter. Man, I am, I'm getting blown away today. I don't even know who this guy is. He looks like Jared Fogle from Subway. Your intentions don't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. It's your intentions that don't matter. It's very crazy because I think one of the first TikToks I saw of Big Nick said, your intentions do matter, but apparently they don't now. Even if you had good intentions, it doesn't matter because nothing matters, especially your intentions. The devil doesn't care about your intentions. Exactly. The demon's not like, oh, I can't enter in them because they have good intentions. <laughs> If we have the revelation of the one true God, why are we so quick to do everything that he's against? Yes. You literally have the truth in front of you and you're going out searching for lies. Okay, well, let's not stretch and let's understand that our intentions don't matter. So if you have good intentions, get fucked because it, who gives a shit? You suck. All right, I'm learning so much. What's this one? You cannot serve God and be on. Looks like a leaf blower. So you can't be leaf blowing things and serve God. No Christian should be smoking marijuana, period. Weed is absolutely demonic. When you are smoking marijuana, you are opening up the door for demons. Oh my god, Bob Molly is like the most demonic person, apparently. If by this logic, he sees like, Buffalo soldier, and he's like, oh my god, it's the devil. You are allowing your spirit man to be projecting into the satanic realm. They literally call it the devil's lettuce for a reason. They also call it other things like the ganja, hash, that green, that good good, that sticky icky icky. They call it a lot of things, man. You know, who am I supposed to believe? I guess you. I wouldn't believe Bob Molly. When you're smoking and you feel that relaxation and that laziness, demons in the spirit realm are making you feel comfortable and making you feel lazy. It's a slothful spirit, a spirit of complacency. And witchcraft is heavily tied in with marijuana when they're doing witchcraft rituals and occult rituals. Marijuana is a big element to that and people don't know about that. Yeah. When I first got saved, I was praying, Lord, just please show me this is wrong. And for the first time in my life, crazy experience happened. I'm high, watching a video, Genesis, the creation of the earth. I hear demonic, disgusting, as everyone does does when they're high just by the way when you're high you do watch things like oh my god dude how was the earth made let's watch that for like five hours dude oh my god there's like so much water evil voices bro it literally sounded like this you should be ashamed about loving god you should be ashamed about researching about god oh uh, yeah that's just when you're high son that's don't worry about that that's not that's that's normal that and oh my god is that a cheeto
over and over and over again Whoa. keep in mind i was on drugs i was yeah. smoking drinking never dealt with demonic encounters like that the minute i start asking god to show me a sign and i'm pursuing jesus christ wholeheartedly i get attacked by demons dude weird timeline that he was getting attacked and pursuing God wholeheartedly whilst smoking, drinking, and everything. I'm not one to judge, but that is, uh, this is a hell of a run that he's going on. I want to look at a few more because I really, I don't know if I'm convinced yet. This one is called one of the craziest Bible verses. Damn. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Meaning that God knew us before we were formed here on this physical earth, right? This is all in one podcast to that same dude. He dropped the hardest knowledge I've ever seen, ever. Whoever this guy is opposite Big Nick, the last thing they learned was uh, don't ever get high. That's the devil's lettuce. Now he's talking about the hardest Bible verse of all time, which I thought was Kanye West, but it's not. There's a testimony of an atheist who had passed away and he had an out-of-body experience where he was sent up to heaven. And when he was sent up to heaven, these angels around him, they were calling him a general. And he's like, why are you calling me by that name? And they're like, you don't understand. Before you were put here on this earth, you were a high-ranking general in the kingdom of God. Came back into his body and became a born-again on fire. They got rankings in heaven? I, th I kind of thought heaven, I didn't have to do this shit. I don't want to be a toilet cleaner in heaven. I want to clean the royal toilet. Like, oh, you took a royal shit. Like, oh my god. Cause you know everything is white in heaven, so that's, that's a lot of cleaning. I'd rather be highly ranked in hell than low ranked in heaven, honestly. Believer, God literally had assignments for us in the spirit realm before we were born. Because think about it, when we're told to repent, we're told to do something again. We are having the mind of Christ again. But how could we have the mind of Christ if the book of Psalms says that we were born into sin and iniquity? The only way that that's possible is by us existing in the spirit with God. I truly believe this and the testimonies verify this. To understand that is going to cure depression. God, damn, this sounds like Eminem in like sign language. Like he's saying a lot and like I'm feeling it. I'm like, yeah, testimony of the faith. And I'm gonna put an embrace. I'm put it in your face. I'm like, oh, okay, but I don't get it. I'm not understanding, but I'm but I'm feeling it, man. To understand that is gonna cure anxiety. To understand that is gonna cure any lie of the enemy. Because when you realize the value that your life has, when you realize that you have a purpose to fulfill here and finish where you left off up there, depression has to go. Come anxiety on. has to go. All of these demonic things that try to take you to the realm that you were never supposed to be in, they have to go. All things. This is like one of those sales and like. They have a couch sale and it's like, all furniture must go. Closing down sale. Anxiety slashed in half. Stop. Depression. Ah, 50% off. It's good. I don't actually know how he's curing it, but like, it's good. I like the idea of not succumbing to those things. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you in a couple of these, Nick. What's this one? The sad truth of leaving earth without Jesus. You take your last breath and now your mortal body has passed away. Your spirit leaves your body and you are now sent up to the spiritual realm where you are awaiting the line of judgment. I don't fucking get in the line. Oh God, what is this heaven shit, man? There's ranks, I have to be in line. This sounds like a dirty club at this point, man. I don't know if I want to be in this club to be judged by God. You never pondered about what happens when you pass away, yet you are now faced with the reality that you can no longer ignore. You didn't give glory to God while you were on earth, and you never repented for your sins and believed on Jesus. The Lord judges you for your iniquity, and you hear the words, depart from me. I never knew you. In that moment, you realize this is just the beginning of eternal suffering. You're God, what a bully. Oh my god, this is what? I didn't, I'm like, I didn't bow down to you now, you're gonna internally, I'm gonna suffer forever now. That's scary. So if I don't like give my all, then I'm going straight down there? That's, that doesn't seem right. That's unfair. Your spirit is now cast all the way down into hell. You would have never expected to end up here, but now you're stuck here forever. Demons await your arrival and immediately begin to torture you, punishing you with pure hatred. You are now outside of the realm of God's presence and nobody is coming to rescue you. This is, sounds like last Tuesday. Oh my God! I don't. This I don't want to have that happen again. What am I? What do I do? What? The atmosphere is no longer full of oxygen, but full of sulfur. You can barely breathe, and the feelings of fear and anxiety magnify beyond levels comprehensible. And you no longer have free will, but instead exist as a device. Well, to be honest, Nick, I don't mean to like shit on you here, but like my only option is to bow down and repent and do everything that you and whoever else is saying. I don't have free will here because then you're not allowing me to do what I want. So it doesn't really change things is all i'm saying but okay for demons to torture you whenever they please god cannot hear you down here nor can he forgive you of your sins any longer Dude, i thought jesus was supposed to forgive you for everything I, what the fuck oh my god what is so it's too late now
It's too, I only have this amount of time, and if I don't do it now, then I'm done. You're telling me God's gonna hit me with the, you had your chance, it's too late, bitch. It's over, stay down there. Yeah, this guy is this guy is insane in the membrane. The worst part is you realize there was a heaven, but now it's too late. You can't choose anymore. You've been eternally sentenced down here. This is not the reality that God wants you to experience. You must do everything you can to make sure you never end up here. Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross was the debt that you would have had to pay by being there for your unrepentant sin. Don't take your eternity lightly because God sure did it when he gave us his only son so that we would not have to end up in eternal punishment, but instead for us to dwell with him in heaven forever that is a lot of information that i need to take on board before i die what is this one exposing the dark th the last one was the sad truth now it's the dark truth and these are all getting millions of views people are really really watching them four million five million three million thirteen million he's really getting to the masses when I used to live in Hollywood and I was actively involved in the industry, there was actually an opportunity where they had tried to initiate me into the occult that goes on in Hollywood. It was a couple years ago and I was in downtown Los Angeles with a friend of mine because he was helping me make a connection with somebody in the music industry. So as I'm in downtown Los Angeles, we go into a warehouse that he had actually turned into a studio. I come to find out after spending some time in the studio that he is later telling me that he throws satanic orgy parties in this studio and he had invited me to come attend. Are you sure that this is, has any anything to do with anything basically it sounds like a guy from downtown LA honestly he then shows me a video reel of what they do after hours in that studio and then he shows me a video of them doing satanic rituals with women locked in cages dressed in bunny ears in this warehouse how is that gonna help music for anyone Nick what kind of studio are you got why do they even have the studio if you're not gonna record your hot ass rap vocals and now hot ass Bible verses it sound more and more like R Kelly and I know for a fact he's not in LA he's in jail this is then when the initiation request started and he had asked me to come join and be a part of this. Satanism is real in Hollywood. Jesus said in Mark 8 36, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? You see so many people with riches and fame thinking that they're living the glory life but you don't understand that everything on the screen is a facade. Deep down inside they're filled with demons and filled with darkness. He's not even wrong. I mean like not even in a, I don't know, he's being really literal here. But in a mer metaphorical sense, yeah, a lot of people give up a lot of like family this that to get something that they think they want and is money everything probably not so there are through lines here every now and again that i'm hearing nick talk about and i'm like okay and then he uses his like semblance of like people agreeing to then throw all of these other things on top of it and i'm like ooh, it didn't didn't say that it didn't ooh, not that one like there's a lot there's a, there's a couple good things and a lot of things that i would like not believe but hey man, Nick, you do you. And if you are a Christian walking in the will of God, you are way better off than any of these Illuminati puppets are. So he almost had an orgy with a guy from LA. What's new? Okay, Hollywood is silent about this. It is absolutely sickening how silent Hollywood is about this new Sound of Freedom movie which is a Christian based film that exposes child trafficking. There is no media coverage about it and no celebrities except for Mel Gibson who already has been blacklisted endorsed it. Oh he's blacklisted for saying, I can't say what he said but I, you know, that's kind of why. He's also not blacklisted anymore, I just want you to know because he made Hacksaw Ridge which is one of the best films I've ever seen. Regardless of his questionable questionable speech stuff that he's done in the past he is a fantastic director and probably not blacklisted because it did get nominated for hella oscars he also made passion of the christ but anyway not to mention netflix hulu and amazon all turned it down from streaming on their platform it seems to have satan completely frightened so naturally i went to go see why not only did this film open my eyes to the complete atrocities that the elite are engaging in behind closed doors but it completely exposes their playbook and how they lure victims in it is absolutely baffling how these celebrities are so quick to hop on every single woke social justice issue but when it comes to child trafficking, there's crickets across the entire industry. You know what? I'm not even gonna, I'm, I'm literally not even gonna say anything wrong with that. That's, that's, you're right. You're, you're a hundred percent right there. I don't know where religion factors into this, but like, as just as a human decency, need to be speaking up about that. And Hollywood is a just pure mess in that sense. But now we're going back in time to what looks like a meme. We went to try the Grimace Shake, then God showed me this. Can he do anything without God showing up? This guy's got God on his literal team, bro. Can I get the Grimace shake? I don't have the Grimace shake. You don't? 
Are y'all gonna restock? I'm not gonna come back anymore. Y'all are just not gonna have it like ever? Yeah, ever. That's, That's cool, man. All right, God bless you, man. In the name of Jesus, have a good day, bro. So I went to McDonald's to get the Grimace shake, thinking that I was gonna have it, thinking that it was secure, it was in the bag. Is this really necessary, Nick? With the last topic you talked about was some real heavy stuff. Now you're talking about Grimace shake? Which just looks like he just oh, in the bottle. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's continue. But you telling me about a fucking grimace shake? Today I'm promised that grimace shake, and it made me realize how often do we act like that with our lives? See, we have eternal souls that are gonna go somewhere when we die, and we wake up every day thinking that today is promised. We don't realize that the time is ticking before we're taking our last breath. Can you give this motherfucker a grimace shake when he asks for it? Because if he's gonna do this every time that he doesn't get what he wants, I'm going to blow my brains off and go straight to. Help. Are you kidding me? You didn't get one grimace shake and now you're back in sermon? Every day is a Sunday for this motherfucker. Jesus. And heaven and hell are real spiritual dimensions and your eternal soul is gonna go to one of these. The Bible says in Romans 6 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ gave us an opportunity to continue to live forever with our God. If we truly accepted the sacrifice that he has done for us on the cross at Calvary, sin separates us from God. And because we're separated from God, we're not promised to be with God for eternity. However, if we deny our flesh, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven and canceled by the blood of Jesus. Tomorrow is not promised, and this is an example of that. <laughs> All the dude said was, we don't have a grimace shake, and he went for He literally was like, okay, drop me a beat. Uh, Testament said that people don't like me. I'm gonna do, uh, despite me. <laughs> Oh my god, I don't even get what just happened. Kills the comments. Bro, it's a grimace shake. What does it have to do with a grimace shake? Okay, uh, Jesus appeared to me, a Hindu. What happens next is insane. Jesus Christ appeared to me when I was an 11 year old boy practicing Hinduism. I was on a vacation one day for Easter weekend, visiting some relatives out of state. And I remember going to bed one night in my hotel room thinking it was just going to be another normal night. All of a sudden I had a very vivid experience seeing Jesus Christ right in front of me. In this dream I'm on a private jet and I'm looking outside of the window. And as I look outside of the window of this jet, there's a beautiful mixture of colors that I've never seen before in the sky. I look back into the hall and I see Jesus Christ at the very end of the hall was it a oh, okay you guys shared the jet then jesus flies private huh pox son of god in the private jet he comes closer to me and we're now sitting at a table in this private jet my soul was so amazed by his glory i just knew in my dream that he had all the answers for my life and i asked this question to him what's the purpose of my life and as soon as i said that he smiled and my mom immediately woke me up out of my dream as soon as she did that i immediately proclaimed mom you woke me up out of my dream with god now as a hindu boy i had no knowledge of christianity yet i still profess him to be god after coming out of the spiritual encounter shortly after the spiritual encounter faded away in my memory and I engaged in a lifestyle of sin. Well, then you fucked it up, didn't you? He came to you on a private jet. He said, this is what you could have. And you were like, nah, I like David Dobrik more. For about another 11 years until one day when the lockdown happened and my whole life was put on pause. I used this time to do deep, extensive research and I was starting to see a lot of proof of God's existence. And I was seeing even more proof that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. After my thorough investigations, I had came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is real. And in my bedroom, I got on my knees and I had repented of my sins for the first time to the Lord. Immediately, I got encountered by His Holy Spirit. The Lord then reminded me of my dream that I had with him 11 years before that. It took 11 years for Jesus to answer my very important question. God is not slow to answering you. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And even if we don't get the answer for it right now, just know that he is working all things on your behalf for your good. I now have the answer to this question that the purpose of my life and your life is to know Jesus Christ, serve him, and make it into the kingdom of heaven that he has prepared for us. Okay, so like we gotta make it into heaven. We coming out the hood with this one, boys. We making it straight into heaven. Heaven, big Nick style and if you're a Hindu then you gotta start having private jets or at least dreams of Jesus Christ on them don't know what you do as a Hindu but you gotta start making that money the other things I've learned in recent TikToks of Big Nick is just don't ever get this man a grimace shake and don't deny him one even more so or he will get testimonious on your ass uh this one is a good one could alcohol be the entity into demonic possession I know I get a bit rowdy when I drink a couple, so yes. 
maybe. I truly believe that alcohol is a spiritual portal towards demonic spirits. They call alcohol spirits for a reason. The word alcohol comes from the Arabic term al kul which means body eating spirit. When somebody gets blackout drunk, they don't remember anything. Their whole body is taken over. Even people in the world tell other people you're not you when you're drunk. No, no, this is Snickers one. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers. Not, this is not, this is not, no, 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 no. Snickers, they had the Betty White commercial. Rest in peace. Wow. Cause you're not, cause a demon has taken over you completely. And it's called spirits. Come on, we can't be ignorant to these things. <laughs> what about liquor? Is that because I lick her? Is that, what is, what is, what is, okay, all right. It's better we stay yeah. away from that crap, you know what I mean? I think so. Hey, but look, I mean, all things considered, alcohol is g genuinely toxic for the body. So if it's gonna get you off of it, Whole power to you, man. Ooh, okay. Next one. Christians should not get tattoos. Here's why. I don't believe that tattoos are fruitful for a Christian, and here's why. I got a full sleeve right here for anyone who can't see. Let's look at the science behind it. They just recently came out with a scientific study that ink in tattoos has very toxic heavy metals that stay in your body for the rest of your life. You know what the science behind getting a tattoo is? You have to create a scar in your body. They didn't just come out with that, Nick. They've been doing this for you. Okay. What if you get a temporary tattoo? Is it okay? Is that cool? What happened to your tattoo? Because you still have tattoos. Are you like, is this bad now? Because you said it was before you were a Christian. Like, is it okay? Can I do, st can I kick my friend in the nuts and then repent? And then it's like, okay, he can't do anything to me. Because in that case, Elvin has a lot to watch out for to fill it with the ink. They're taking a needle and they're scraping it over and over and over again, and then they're putting the ink in there. It's body mutilation at the end of the day. We look at people who are cutting themselves, self-harm, and we think that's wrong, but we're cutting ourselves with the needle and putting ink in it, and we're telling people, nah, nah, that's dope, you gotta do that. Now, people can make the argument of, well, when God says not to get tattoos, they were doing tattoos as a form of worship to their pagan deities, but we're doing it for God. We're gonna get a cross tattoo because we love God. Does God think that our loyalty to him is based on a mark that we put in our body we're marked in the spirit the mark of god is in our transformed lives if jesus is right in front of me would i feel comfortable doing that probably not i mean i don't know there's a lot of rules man we got to repent to the man but we don't you know it doesn't matter about the tattoos if even if we get a tattoo off thing it's like oh, god doesn't care about that but he does care if you're like shit talking him then he's sending you straight to hell for eternal suffering forever i just need to know the rule book because i'm a bit behind on the players a music video making fun of god has 380 million views while a music video worshiping god only has a thousand views uh nick does this often by the way there's another one where he talks about lil nas x and then him only getting a few thousand views and <coughs> it's always him being really sad it comes off as not just preachy but like almost guilt tripping or like very sad and manipulative and i don't know i just i really don't like that part that he's doing right there i think it's very very bad you hate the cross because it challenges the way you live it they want me gone because i'm speaking facts i'm not quitting repent now or perish if you do not stop sinning my riches are in heaven i don't need no bust down what do you say my riches are in heaven i don't need no bust down but he's wearing grills while doing it. <laughs> no, grills are supposed to be diamonds on your teeth. Oh, here's another one. This world is so messed up. A man wearing makeup can get 35 million views. Meanwhile, a man making videos for God can barely get 4.2 thousand views. This is proof we're in the last days. I gotta be honest, man. I don't even know what to say because the James Charles, uh, but okay. He's so sad again. Every time, he's so sad that things aren't going well for him. My favorite video of his is the one where he just straight up admits, just every, don't even respect other religions. Okay, so this is the one. This is, this is the one. Hinduism, praise to gods. Christianity, praise to Jesus. Way better. Yeah, the lie of reincarnation, that's, that's some bullshit. If you come back as a cow, you're probably a bitch. Heaven and hell is way better. Like, it's much better to either burn in hell for the eternity or better to be waiting in line for heaven like you're in the club. Baby, let me see it. Hinduism, being a slave to depression. And sin I guess I've been a Hindu all my life then. Because I love sinning and I hate depression, but I got it. Hinduism, believe in karma. That's, that's some bullshit. And if you believe that, then you're probably gonna get some karma, which is not something that we believe in. And Christianity, realizing God is forgiving, unless, of course, 
you make fun of him because then he will make you eternally suffer in hell. And we remember that because this is one of the TikToks. And you know what? Here's the top comment. Ex-Christian here, now I'm Hindu. So he's really doing God's work. It just depends who's God you believe in. The, and I guess my favorite video of his is also got this video, which I don't think I even want to comment on, but... The fact that we've <clears throat> we allowed this in our society and accepted it and cheered it on is sickening to me. You see, abortion is more than just a clump of cells. Argentina's law makes it okay to abort a baby that's 14 weeks old. This is what a 14 week old baby looks like. That's not just a clump of cells. If we look here in the Bible, it says in Jeremiah 1 5, God tells Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see, God knows us before we're even born. And when you're killing that child, you're taking away that calling that God has for that child. So if you think my body, my choice, understand if your mom thought the same way, you wouldn't even be here online debating me right now. I have one response to that, Nick, and I don't think you're going to like it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I've killed many children on a lot of goals before, so they seem to like it. Moving on. <clears throat> I can't believe he even made a video on that. Well, <clears throat> this brings me to the best one. This is the video. This is the apex. It's called Christians avoid these for your own good. If you want to be a good Christian like Big Nick or a, a Nickian, I think I kind of forgot his cult, but we've learned a lot today. But this is the things that you should avoid. You don't fucking swear, okay? Don't listen to worldly music. Only listen to what? Secular music. Non-secular music? You only listen to Kanye West, but not the not that Chicago shit. Sorry for my swearing. You listen to that Jesus is King type shit, alright? Don't fuck around with that other shit. Yeah, you should avoid respecting other religions because that's bullshit. Sorry again for swearing, but that's fucked up. Don't ever, Hindus especially, they do yoga, those bitches. And that's it. If you, if you could just stop respecting other people, stop listening to music, and stop fucking swearing a lot, you should be in heaven as soon as, honestly, by tomorrow. At this rate, you'll get FedEx there. You want to be a good Christian? You just follow all these rules that Big Nick said, which most of them I forgot. But if we could try and recap, uh, don't do yoga. Uh, don't smoke marijuana. Don't drink. Don't get tattoos. Do not ever, ever off of Big Nick uh, Grimace Shake. Don't do that one. Just avoid respecting people and their religions. That would be good. Don't listen to music. Stop. Cardi B's, she's the horrible. Ariana Grande, mm -mm. Hollywood sucks. Repent, just lots of repentation. Also, get a private jet if you're Hindu so you can have better dreams. And uh, I think you'll be fine. This is Big Nick. This is Big Nick telling you that if you do that shit, you will be in the kingdom of heaven. What has really happened here? I don't know. First, I was pleasantly surprised Big Nick had a change of heart. I remember seeing him on the podcast in H3H3 when, when he first came on and he seemed to have found himself. And it's a very different thing because I have a lot of Christian friends. And not only do I respect them, I love them dearly because they are great people to me. And I think they are great people to other people. And I think respecting someone in this life, Nick. No, I don't even know about the other when I'm done. Because maybe Nick's right. Maybe I'm going to go to hell and suffer there for eternity. And maybe I've got everything wrong. But until that point, life to me seems very long. And it seems just the human decency thing to do to respect other people. Whether what they believe in is aligns with your values or it doesn't. Because there's so many billions of people that just logically speaking, you're not going to connect to everyone. Look, I respect Nick for trying. But at the same time, I'm going to try and be nice to people. Respect them and also respect the people who try to do this. Because I guess at the end of the day in their heads, a lot of people are just trying to get everyone into the kingdom of heaven. Basically, Nick is like, yo, I found this major club. There's a couple rules though. You got to worship the DJ. You got to listen to everything I say. You can only listen to his music. If you are believing in other DJs, you're a bitch. But don't swear. That's crazy. And um, yeah, don't do yoga. 
this this is a club that requires you to not do yoga and he just wants to get all of us in the club so you know i appreciate you nick for trying i think that you're a bit misguided in just the way that you're doing it and the fact that on the internet maybe a lot of people don't want to be persuaded i mean that's crazy but some of his, his viewpoints are pretty staunch i don't know if i agree with them but as i said i respect you i don't know if i'm ready to join your cult yet maybe i'll need to do a deep dive into your youtube channel maybe the audience can let me know but until then stop stretching bitch okay i'm sorry take care of yourselves um thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one down in the dirt that's where you find me drown in the bed she's still alive